two, one. Hello, everybody. Now we're going out for dinner. So we're being served elegantly. Here's our dinner setting. There is what we call a charger. All right, that's a charger. And I love them. They also come in square. And then there is the china and the setting. So let me explain. Oh, let me explain first oh, the settings. Okay, here we go. Uh, we have a spoon, a knife, and another teaspoon on the right. Remember I mentioned um, knives and spoons are on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, we have, on the outside, we have a salad fork and then the dinner fork. I have been to restaurants where they have, not the charger, they have a plate underneath, like this. It's a gorgeous plate, and you think that you're going to eat off that plate. That is called the place plate. So what happens is when everyone is seated and you're going to order, they take this away. So now you have no plate whatsoever because the plate that's coming in would be with your meal. This is just for looks. I'm going to have to say, when I've done a dinner and I want a little more for a formal, I will do the charger and I will do the plate because in my particular dinners, I set a buffet table that is beautiful looking and they take their plate and go out to the buffet and then come back in because I don't want the food around here. That's, that's my take on it. So we're going to eat off this plate, pretending I'm helping the waiter. All right, judging by the way this table is set, now when you go to a restaurant, they don't know what you're going to eat, right? So they have to set it a certain way that no matter what you're going to eat, there are things there for you. If you were in someone's home, they're already telling you, you're having soup, a large soup spoon, your knife to cut the meat, and then over here would be, take notice, the coffee cup is here, so no doubt that is for coffee, which generally is at the end. Then you have your salad fork, you start from the outside and work in, then that is gone. Then you have your dinner fork and your dinner knife here, would be the last ones with the exception of the coffee spoon. Now, up above here is a steak knife. Now, this steak knife would be in your home because you know you're going to serve roast beef or steak. And then up above it is your spoon, a little fancier spoon, and that would be for dessert. So you can put utensils up above the, the extra utensils. To the left of all of this, people, this is where people don't know or forget. Let's say they forget. The bread and butter dish is on the left-hand side. Now, normally, I don't put a bread and butter uh, knife. Generally, I keep it on the, the butter dish. But I put it here. So that's for your bread and butter. This is something else that I say to people, I will teach you three things you did not know, and this is one of the biggest. So, we've talked about the table settings, let's talk about the glasses. I have a glass here, stem glass, and that would be for water. To the right of it is our wine glass, stemmed wine glass. And I've put a fanned napkin in it. It's a special kind of fold for the fanned napkin. And then this is for a cordial or an after-dinner drink. Now, if you were in someone's home, they are going to be serving all of this. If you're at a restaurant, and a restaurant that I went to had every utensil under the sun to choose from, and every glass there was, and I think there was one more, because they don't know what you're going to eat, but they're prepared for you. And then the um, coffee uh, cup and saucer is to your right. 
So we've taken care of everything at the table. Now it is time for us to eat. And can I just ask you one quick question sure. before you do that? So let's say you're serving or you're in a restaurant, one or the other. You have that charger. You have the dinner plate. When Let's say you ordered an appetizer and then maybe you ordered soup. So does that dinner plate get taken away when the appetizer plate comes? No, it could come. Uh, it depends on the restaurant. In the restaurant, they would no doubt take this away. This would not be here. So they would just set it on the table. That means your appetizer w uh, would come in, your soup would come in, and then let's say your salad. The salad is the... It, Actually, uh, we'll talk about salad later, though. But so, what about, and if you were in your own home, would you do the same thing, take that big plate away? Uh, personally, I would not. So personally, what I would do is I'm not going into this special plate. I have a special charger, the dinner plate, because remember, I'm serving buffet style. So I would come in with the appetizer and put it on the plate, because remember, that appetizer would have its own special plate underneath. So you won't get this messy. Okay, that's what I was curious about. Messy. That makes sense. So okay. then the fork or whatever it is would go on the place plate and you'd take that away. Okay. Okay. That okay. Now, um, the water would be poured before you even get there with lemon inside. The wine, because this is here, the wine would be poured as soon as this is taken away. So I could take this away right now and just put it on my plate and whoever is there would pour the wine for you. And in the wine, people pour it sometimes like a full glass of wine. That is not necessary and it's unnecessary because you want your wine poured to maybe no more than a quarter to half. Now, of course, if you're at a restaurant and you're paying for it, you want it as full as possible. Definitely. <laughs> but if you're in someone's home, halfway, because the etiquette of wine is to, uh, if it's chilled, to hold it by the stem and move it around and smell it. Now, the only way you're going to be able to move this wine around is by having it half filled. And you can get it filled anytime you want. Okay. So we have our water, we have our wine, we have our napkin on our lap, all right? So we're ready to eat. Now, someone is going to say, could you pass the rolls, please? Now, if the rolls are down there, etiquette-wise, you never, even if you can reach it, you never reach for anything. You say to the person next to you, no matter what, wherever it's closer to, uh, could you pass me the rolls, please? And if you're passing the rolls, if it's going by you, really, put a roll on your plate. Then it comes to me, I'll take the roll or the bread and put it on my plate. And I've seen people take that basket or whatever and just drop it because they already have it. Well, how about that person? So get, in plain English, get rid of it. So somebody won't ask you to pass it and they'll interrupt your meal. So pass it to the next person. She may say, uh, no thank you. Oh, that's all right. That's all right, ma'am. But take it anyway and pass it down to the other person. Good. That's what should be done. Good advice. Okay, so it's right down here. Now, here's the thing. We have the, the, the butter dishes right in front of me. I will open it. And generally, it would be opened anyway. And I will take the, br the butter dish. Now, this is something people do not do. They take the bread and they'll break it or take the slice of bread and they'll stop buttering it, the whole slice of bread. That is absolutely a no-no. The bread should be broken in half or the roll should be halved. Then that half should be halved again or a piece as much as your mouth could take within reason. So a cube of bread from that other half should be taken. Then, here's what you do with the butter. 
you take a slab of butter and you put it on your butter dish. You don't butter your bread from here. This belongs to everybody. So what you're going to do is you've taken your butter there and let's pretend everyone has a bread and butter knife and then you pass this down to the next person and the next person passes it down to the other person. As you're waiting for your meal and conversing, and by the way, conversing can be elbows on the table. No problem. When you're conversing and you're not eating and you haven't had your food served to you, elbows can go on the table and you're conversing with everybody. Now the food starts coming in. That's where the elbows no longer will be on the table because now you are eating and that is a no-no if the elbows are on the table. So I have my roll, I have my butter. I break my bread or my roll, then I take another section of it, about like that. I take my butter, butter that roll, place the knife down again, and put the whole piece in my mouth. The word is never. I very seldom use that word never. You never now what am I going to say? You never take a bite of your bread a piece at a time, and that's what the majority of people do. So, so you break the bread. You break the bread the size of how much you're going to put in your mouth. Now I'm going to tell you a little quick story. When I and you teach your children at home. When I was teaching my children that, we went to a restaurant and my daughter ended up breaking all these pieces of bread on, on the bread plate. And I said, Bethany, what are you doing? She said, well, I don't want to have to do one at a time, so I figured I'd do it all, all at the same time. And I thought that was kind of cute. She remembered you break your bread, but she didn't know that it was one piece at a time. That is cute. Okay, one piece at a time. Patience. So you're eating, <laughs> and then you're, uh, remember, this is not here if you're at a restaurant. Uh, so if you're at a restaurant, what they do is they serve you on the left, they, supposedly. They serve you, they all don't do that. They serve you on the left and remove from the right. Okay, so your meal will come. What about the salad? You were going to talk a little bit about, oh, the, about salad. the salad. The salad can be served at the beginning, of course, and the majority of people do that. But what, uh, I think the reason for that is especially if you're at a restaurant, they want to fill you up. So by the time you get your um, entree, uh, no matter how small it looks, you're going to be full at the end of the meal because you've already had your appetizer, your salad, your, your soup, your salad, and that's enough. And see, some people would get filled quickly. But your salad could also be served at the very end of the meal. That's more European, right? European. At the end of the meal, because it, uh, it, it cleans the palate, which it does here as well, but it will uh, clear your palate, it will fill you, but it will remove the all of those extra tastes that maybe you don't want at the very, very end. And so that could be served at the very end. So it depends on how you want to do it. All right. Another thing. Let's say someone will want their coffee. And not their, the majority of people would say no. Oh, no, I'd like my coffee now. They pour the coffee. Now, the coffee spoon is here. Otherwise, if everyone had their coffee served first, it would be on the outside of the of the um, soup spoon. And here's another thing. When someone says to you, pass the cream and sugar, please. Now the cream and sugar is right here. Some people would, would take it like this and go like this to pass it like this. Actually, you want to pick it up by the handle, turn it around, and let them take it by the handle. Which makes so much sense because they can't grab it the other right. way. And they're going to pour it that way. You're not going to pour it this way. You're going to pour it that way. So very important, you turn the handle to the person next to you. Same with the sugar. I'm taking the sugar and I'm passing it with the handle. 
Is there any right or wrong as to pass to the right or left first, or that doesn't matter? Well, there there is, but I'm going to say this, and it just makes more common sense in it, that you're going to pass to the person closest to where you're going to use it. Why pass this? If I want it, why should this person pass it, the six people at the table, pass it to uh, five, four, three, two, and then one. Why not pass it closest to the person that wants it? Okay. So I think that would be the fair way, way to go. Now, you also, let's say you're having your coffee, there's cream and the sugar, you're going to stir it, all right? When you're through with your coffee and the stirring, you're going to place it on the place plate. So bottom line is, whenever you have a place plate, that's where the spoon goes, or the fork goes. All right. And again, we have our soup spoon. We spoon away and eat. Spoon away. Our arms are off the table. You absolutely do not slurp. All right. Do not slurp. The whole thing goes in your mouth. And occasionally, you do this. If someone was talk talking to you, you just want to be sure everything is clean up there. Then your salad is... Uh, given to you, you take the outside spoon because that's the salad and you would eat your salad. The important thing is you never cut your salad completely. You cut just what you're going to eat. That's it. Just okay, because I've seen eat. people take the knife and cut the and whole cut salad. Yeah. Well, it would be the same thing as now we're being served our entree. The entree, let's say, is a steak. All right, we have a steak knife up here. So you just cut one piece at a time what you, you cut need. one piece at a time and only one piece at a time. Uh, let's see, and then you have dessert up here and everything is removed and then dessert would come in. And in the meantime, you're drinking your water, you're drinking your, um, your wine. Let me tell you something about the wine. When your wine is filled, who, whoever is the hostess, is the other host would be the one to make the toast. I have been or I have had a dinner where before I have even sat down someone saying I'd like to make a toast. That is an absolute no-no and it's bad manners. Okay, I don't think most of us don't know that. Bad yeah. manners. The person who is in the home or the person who took you out for dinner or invited you out for dinner is the one that should make the toast first. Now, if he or she doesn't, you could say to them, Holly, uh, could I make a toast? And you'll say, of course, you know, and you would make the toast. And if somebody else has something to say regarding the toast, that's wonderful. But that happened to me not too long ago. And, I, and it, it was not good manners. And, and above all is don't do anything. Do not start eating until everyone has sat down, especially at a dinner at someone's home, and especially the hostess. Make sure she's sitting down. Now, if you're a hostess and you have things to do, like always, you could say to your people, please go right ahead and start. Then fine, you can start, but you do not start unless the hostess gives you permission. Very important. Now, in a restaurant, a lot of times people will wait for everyone to be served, but I know we've always said, oh, yours is hot, go ahead and yes. please start. and you know, I think that's a great idea. When you're in a restaurant and you're being served, unless it's a small group now, if you have a group of four or six people, even eight, you can sort of wait, but unless someone says to you, a couple will say to you, Oh, please go right ahead and eat then you can but until then you sort of wait because it shouldn't be taking that long remember if you're in a a good restaurant all that all those meals should be prepared all at one time and should be ready for you so the wait shouldn't be that long unless the waitress says it'll be a few minutes before we have your steak ready because you wanted it well done, that's fine. So then that person can say, please go ahead and eat your food. Um, 
Oh, and same with the salt and pepper. Here's the salt and pepper here. Let me tell you something about the salt and pepper. When someone says, could you pass the salt? Don't just pass the salt. Pass the salt and pepper together, whether they want it or not. Because remember, the person next to them may say, oh, I don't use salt, I want the pepper. So you already have it there. So that's, a, that's it, a great piece of advice. Pass it together. Let's see. Did we complete this? I think we've got the whole meal pretty much covered. I think. Um, and what you would do again, you would dab the mouth, place this on the right-hand side, and the uh, waitress, waiter would come by and, and ask you if you're through. Oh, by the way. Oh, no, 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 no. By the way, let's pretend now we've cut our, our steak. Very important. You're cutting your steak. After you've cut your one piece, you place the knife at the far top of the plate at an angle. Then you transfer, or however you do it, you, you may be um, European and you would eat this way, but that you're European, that's fine. So you pick up your food and eat, all right? Chew with your mouth closed. Again, piece of the steak up on the right-hand side and you eat again. When you are through with your food, you just don't place your fork down like this because the waitress, unless the food is completely gone, they don't really know whether you're through or not. So you must take your steak knife or your regular dinner knife and place it alongside of the fork. So th at an angle here. So this is telling the waitress the person that is serving you, that you are through. Very good. Very good tip. And I think that pretty much says it all. Thank you. Happy dining.